economic destruction. 25 million producers out of work, many of them third world farmers. Brazil, Vietnam, Indonesia, Colombia, Ethiopia, India, Mexico, all collapsing as their exports dwindle. The U.S. goes from spending $4 billion a year on their largest food import to absolutely nothing. Nowhere to meet, nothing to drink. Individuals and the world are at a loss. A world without coffee. Though coffee has a huge economic impact, the U.S. has cultivated an entire coffee culture with significant social influence. What's your favorite drink? Um, a soy latte. Caramel macchiatos. Grinding it in, doing a French press. A latte is my go-to drink. A black coffee. Particularly Ethiopian. Just a straight up latte. Soy vanilla lattes, or I like just shots of espresso. Before the age of technology, coffee brought people together and helped form an environment of bonding, sharing, talking, and growing relationships. It's a simple resource that sits at the center of almost every social event. Birthdays, funerals, weddings, nursing homes, church events, coffee is everywhere. Though America has become obsessed with coffee as an accessory and addiction, Finland is the number one coffee consumer followed by Norway and Iceland. While the U.S. is actually 25th in coffee consumption. With one coffee house for every 14,000 Americans, the numbers are rising as quickly as its popularity. I don't think that coffee is the end to, it, it's to itself. I think it's a means to an end. So I think coffee is used for, um, you know, dialogue or conversation. Sometimes I go like on campus and get stuff, or I go to the Prudhoe Plain, stuff like that. So how often do you come into the shop? Um, not as much as I'd like to, probably like once a month. I don't know, it's a really good like social gathering spot, so it just kind of depends. This one in particular? Yeah. Oh, about once or twice a week. Yeah, I like to get out of the house, um, find a different location, have a good atmosphere to study in. Angie McKee has been drinking coffee for over 30 years, and we asked her to quit for three days to see how it affected her physically, mentally, and socially. Okay, day one of my coffee fast. I'm expecting the worst, but so far so good. The first thing I always do in the morning is get up and make me a pot of coffee because that's the first thing I want. And this morning I couldn't do that. So I was feeling a little maybe anxious and I didn't know what to do with my time. Um, so far no headache. I did have a cup of hot chocolate which was a very poor substitute for my coffee. Um, but we'll see how the rest of the day goes. Well I'm a lot more fun to be around in the morning after I've had some. Uh, but realistically, it's become part of my routine. I, I like to wake up in the morning and spend an hour uh, in quiet by myself, um, doing some personal devotion time with God. And I always drink a cup of coffee while I'm doing that. And it's just almost become a, it's all kind of part of the same package in a weird sort of way. So not that it's become religious to me, but as far as um, routine and repetition go, I guess it has become religious to me. I drink coffee about three to a bajillion times a day. Pretty much, it's nonstop. Probably three or four cups, yeah. Um, a lot, like three, four. I'm a medical student, so it's kind of a necessity to drink. Probably about five cups, <laughs> <laughs> at least. So yeah, I do have an obsession of coffee. <laughs> I kinda need the caffeine, because I'm kind of addicted to it now. But I also drink it for the flavor. I love coffee. I don't like putting anything in it really. Just bold and rich. If you make a really good cup of black coffee, the acidity is actually a good taste. And then when you finish it, what they call the finish or at the end, it doesn't leave you with this, this sense of bitterness. But I can actually get to the point where I, I like my coffees that I make so much that I can even drink them lukewarm and they still taste good. I did fight a 
headache pretty much all night last night. So I don't know if it's from the coffee or what, but so today, this morning, I just did not feel good either. Um, the whole, I don't know what to do with my time thing. I didn't have as much today, but I usually have a cup of coffee when I'm doing my hair and when I'm paying my bills and I didn't have that this morning. So anyway, this is day two. So, um, we'll see how social I am today. Uh, the, I, the only reason I ever go to coffee shops is for conversation or to, it's a great place to meet people, provides a, um, I guess a place where it's not, not in my office nor it's in their territory, but it's a great common ground where, you know, we're both just open and come together. Um, I like it because they serve good drinks, obviously, in the coffee. In this particular place, I usually come in by myself because I'm killing time while my son's out of class. So, but I like that. I like quiet time to myself, so it doesn't bother me at all. Um, I'll either come by myself or today I'm with my girlfriend. Well, ever since I've come to Dort, it's more of like a grab and then go do something type of thing. But at home, I would literally like hey, say, hey, want to go for coffee or something to a friend. And like we would always go and stuff. But yeah, ever since I came here, it was more of like, a, oh, let's get coffee and then let's go do something else. The first coffee shops in England served their drinks in dishes, and they quickly became a popular spot for important officials to meet and discuss politics. Who knows how many important political decisions were debated over a cup of joe. Today, we still gather over our foam and triple espressos, but the many distractions that accompany us make interaction optional. Uh, a lot of people studying or um, interested in conversing. Um, in a way that they're looking for attention, um, where they want to have a face-to-face -face conversation that goes both ways, I guess. Um, it's not so much a party atmosphere, you know. It's not a, it's not a drink that really attracts like craziness. It's more contemplative and reflective, I would say, generally. Um, I was thinking about how, you know, how we all sit around and we chat and we get caught up, and how like. I refocus on my cup of coffee. Like when we're socializing and stuff, like my coffee is my center and my focus. It's a, it makes it easier to study when you have a change of scenery, I guess, when you're out of your home environment and you can kind of focus on what you need to focus on. Usually alone, like I mentioned, I usually come just to read and get some studying in, so that's best accomplished alone, I guess. I feel like coffee shops are traditionally known as a place where people come to meet each other and. I guess that's one thing I haven't really done a whole lot is when I come and I see all this opportunity to meet new people, however, I'm usually just focused on my own task at hand, so I suppose that's one area where personally I can maybe expand on is trying to meet new people while I'm at coffee shops, but uh, may maybe one day. Now these coffee connoisseurs and social sippers share how this simple pleasure has been a part of their lives. The first coffee that I ever had was forced upon me. I was in a punk rock band with some friends in high school and they told me I could only do it if I drank a whole pot of coffee in one sitting. Which if you've never done that before, I don't recommend. It uh, gives you the jitters and some other um, complications. Okay, um, my coffee fast is over. Yay! I'm really happy because coffee is like my little warm hug in a mug. Um, the effects were not that bad. I thought they would be worse because I do drink quite a bit of coffee throughout the day, so I'm celebrating wearing my coffee earrings today. It's been a fun challenge for me to try to do this, and um, I didn't kill anybody, and I'm still married. I don't really drink it for the caffeine. I drink it because I love it, so I'm kind of a snob. So I just won't drink any coffee. It's got to be good coffee. Um, well, I like their coffee, obviously, and I'm gluten-free, so they have gluten-free pastries. Um, and also, like, it's a really good study environment, and it's pretty quiet, and there's lots of space, unlike most other coffee shops, so. I kind of like the, the vibe it's putting out with the brick walls and the, I don't know, the art everywhere. There's this guy here at Dort. Um, he brought Brazilian coffee with him to America, um, so I've had that, and it's pretty good, actually.
But once you've kind of acquired a taste, you can definitely enjoy it a lot more. Um, amazing. Delicious. <laughs> I feel great. <laughs> amazing feeling. <laughs> Heaven? <laughs>